Hi Brolis, Marvin here from TechBeerall.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy bureaus. So last week, I shared with you my unboxing and stock build of the GMMK Pro 75% mechanical keyboard and I also shared with you all the upgrades and modifications that I plan to do. So in this video, I'll share with you exactly how I executed those upgrades so that you can have an idea how to drastically improve both the typing experience and sound quality of the GMMK Pro. This build in particular focuses on improving the typing feel by upgrading the stabilizers, modifying the gaskets, and essentially make a GMMK Pro Flex build. I'll make this as concise as possible, so let's get into it. Alright, so like the unboxing and stock build, I also live streamed this entire upgrades and modifications build on one of our chill streams on Facebook. So make sure to follow me there if you don't want to miss out. This YouTube version, however, is the summarized version, so you guys can easily follow everything in just a few minutes. I'll also explain later the reasons for each modification, so make sure to watch the entire video. Okay, so like I said, the goal of this particular build is to upgrade some of the notable weaknesses of the stock GMMK Pro, most especially the overlooped stabilizers, the sticky stabilizer dampeners, and the fairly thin gaskets. As I've pointed out in my stock build video, the GMMK Pro is one of the best 75% mechanical keyboards out in the market only if you have the time to tinker with it and make the necessary modifications. Once you have those modifications dialed down, you will definitely appreciate this keyboard more and not only that, you'll also gain enough experience to prepare yourself for your next possible custom build. Because honestly, you will definitely be forced to learn with this keyboard. Alright, so first things first, let's tear this keyboard apart. And one of the things that people have reported is that there are some cases that the screws are over tightened. But in my case, I didn't encounter that. But to make sure, especially if you're also using an electronic screwdriver like this, a wow stick, then the best way to do it is to manually loosen the screws first while pushing it firmly to prevent loose thread. And then once it is loose enough, you can now initiate the electronic motor. Once done, you can simply lift the top housing away like so. Then lift the plate and PCB combo gently because it's actually attached to the daughter board with a wire which you can easily disconnect. And that's about it for the basic teardown of this keyboard. Now for our build, since I want to introduce some flex, I'm not going to return this bottom case foam. Okay, so the next step is to remove the center screws and standoffs and then remove all the screws around connecting the PCB and the plate. Also remove the screws on the side diffusers. Now I suggest you take note of the orientation of these side diffusers so that you'll know exactly how to install them back later. Alright, now you have two options when it comes to the stabilizers. Either you stick with the goat stabs or replace it with an aftermarket stabilizer. If you want to stick with the goat stabs, you will have to clean them up and relube them properly. What I did is I just replaced the goat stabs with C3 equal stabilizers and I chose the C3 equal stabs because it is 100% compatible with the stock plate of the GMMK Pro at least with its first version of the plates. I heard Glorious will offer a newer version that will be compatible with most aftermarket stabilizers. I also lubed and wholly modded the C3 equal stabilizers with Crytox 205 Grade 0 and Mediplast. By the way, I also did another test using Micropore wrapped around the wires and I had to use Micropore instead of Band-Aid because the Mediplast Band-Aid is too thick to be used for wrapping the wires. It was too mushy even with just the Crytox 205 Grade 0. Later, we'll have some sound test comparison so that you can have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Next, another important thing that you need to replace is the stock stabilizer dampeners. As you can see, it is definitely sticky, making the stabilizer super mushy. Now, before I replace them, I clean the PCB with alcohol. For replacement, I use the KBD fan stabilizer dampeners. You can also use Band-Aid or Teflon tape as alternatives. Next, I installed the lubed and wholly modded C3 equal stabilizers. These are screw-in stabilizers that are quite stable. Now, every time you modify stabilizers, make sure to do a quick sound and feel test first before building the entire keyboard so that you can retune them if necessary. At this point, I'm fairly satisfied with my job, so let's move on. The next step is to upgrade the gaskets around the bottom case. And like I said on the stock build video, some people prefer the triple gasket mod by simply adding a couple more of these extra gaskets with no extra cost. But for this build, I will use the thicker D65 gaskets from KBD fans so that I only need to add one more layer which is in my opinion more stable and doesn't add an additional point of failure compared to the triple stacked gaskets. I'm not sure whose original idea is this because I've seen this all over the internet and was recommended to me by many. So full credits go to all of them. <laughs> 
I used the thin ones on the D65 gasket sheet and carefully installed them around the bottom case. As you can see, the difference between the stock gasket and with an additional D65 gasket is night and day. The next step is to modify the optional polycarbonate plate. I said optional because first, you really don't have to buy an extra polycarbonate plate. You can just use the stock aluminum plate. And second, you also don't need to do what I'm about to do, which is to cut all the screw mounting points. The reason why I did this though is that, as I pointed out earlier, I want to introduce some flex for a more softer typing feel and these mounting points and screws are not necessary anymore and might interfere with the play or movement of the plate and PCB. And it's easier to do this as well with this polycarbonate plate compared to aluminum. With aluminum, you need something like a Dremel to accomplish this. This was actually suggested to me by Sir Mike De Jesus and Josiah Gachalian, along with other tips, so thank you guys. Now, one of my viewers during the live stream also suggested adding extra gaskets on the part where I removed the screw mounting points. I think it's Jeremy Ray Macalino, if I'm not mistaken, so thank you to you as well. This proved to be a good modification as it fits perfectly with the PCB foam and still provides enough support while maintaining our objective, which is to allow movement for the PCB and plate. Next, we need to install back the center screws and standoffs. Now, some people say you don't need to reattach these standoffs and some say it is necessary. I decided to just reattach them because it actually doesn't hinder the movement of the PCB and plate combo as you can see here. Next is to secure the PCB and plate by screwing the side diffusers back and don't forget to use the black screws that came with the polycarbonate plate. These are the only screws that you need to install back aside from the center standoffs since we've already removed the rest. Next, install the PCB and plate combo back into the bottom case. And like I said earlier, I'm not going to put the bottom case foam back so that the PCB and plate has some room to work with. As you can see here with our modified gaskets, the amount of cushion is now fairly substantial compared to the stock configuration. And the reason why we're doing this is to make sure the gasket mount design works as intended, providing a softer typing experience while also reducing the amount of reverb coming from material contact while typing. Next, put the top casing back and the last thing we need to do is to secure it with screws. Now here's the catch. Since we've added more gaskets, it's kinda hard to completely shut the casing now, so I had to tighten the screws at only around 50%. This will also allow that flex that we are going after. Just make sure the screws are not that loose that they can fall off on their own. Alright guys, we're almost done with the build. All that is left now is to install the switches and keycaps. So for this modified and upgraded flex build, I'm still going to use the Glorious Panda tactile switches, but this time I now loop them with the Tribosis 3203 to reduce the pinging sound and make the switch smoother and sound much better. For lubing tactile switches like this, you need to be careful not to lube the tactile bump. Installing the switches is pretty straightforward. Just make sure the pins are straight and then push them gently into the hot swap sockets. And lastly, we need to install the keycaps and for this build, I'm using the Mars Colony XDA PBT set of keycaps that I got from Bangu.com. I honestly feel that it perfectly matches the colors of the Glorious Panda switches and the pink C3 equals tabs also gave it a quite unique look. I also installed one of my favorite artisan keycaps of all time, the custom tech B-roll wooden artisan keycaps from Tokis. And to top it all off, I also replaced the stock encoder knob with a brown 3D printed knob. Oh, by the way, Cables also sent this awesome custom called cable that is specifically made for this GMMK Pro build and as you can see, it is absolutely perfect. Check out their page on the link below. So overall, everything blended together with this white ice variant of the GMMK Pro alongside my other desktop peripherals here, don't you think? Let me know in the comments below what you think about this build. Now here's a sound test and comparison between the stock build, modified stock build and other configurations that I did for the GMMK Pro. Please use headphones by the way.
Now, in terms of the typing feel and sound, I must say, it is definitely night and day. The annoying ping sound is now gone, and the stabilizers are now fairly decent compared to the stock GOAT stabilizers. Albeit, honestly, it needed some time breaking in. It sounded quite mushy on the sound test, but trust me, after using it for a week, the stabilizers feel and sound really good right now, using the Micropore Wire Wrap mod with Tritox 205 Grade 0. It's worth noting that if you want to use the Mediplast for the Holy mod, I suggest you make it two layers, as a single layer proved to be quite thin, that's why I modified it again with the Micropore Wire Wrap mod after the fact. And if you decide to do the Wire Wrap mod, use Micropore tape instead of Mediplast. As for the flex experience, to be honest, you'll only notice it flex if you type really hard, but it definitely provides that Cushion typing feel compared to using the stock aluminum plate. And that's about it for this video. I hope you learned a thing or two that you can also apply to your own GMMK Pro should you choose to tinker with it. Again, my recommendation for the GMMK Pro remains the same. If you have the time to tinker with this keyboard, especially all the different modifications and upgrades that you can do, like there are actually a lot of different combinations that should cater to anyone's preference, then honestly, the GMMK Pro is probably one of the best out in the market right now when you consider the price to features ratio. This is something that wasn't really available before that bridges the gap between mainstream and enthusiast level keyboard. However, if you don't have the time and patience, and you simply just want a usable keyboard out of the box, then look somewhere else. It's that simple. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to Glorious and Rotobox Philippines for sending this in. You can get this on the links below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.